you know, my day job now is in t television and it's, it's really trying to sell TV shows to uh, TV networks and, and then try to make the best possible show uh, fr from that. But uh, th there is a real appetite for books at the moment. Um, I think it's because, that, you know, everyone's looking for an underlying property. Everyone's looking, you know, like we, we are working in a very noisy market and we're, we're trying to, everyone's trying to get something that cuts through. So, so uh, for instance, um, when I read uh, Barracuda, uh, you know, the, t uh, c continuing the Christos thread, um, I, I love the book, and, but it, it's a particularly difficult adaptation with, because it spans um, a very long period of time. And, and time is actually one, one of the things you can do so much better in prose than you can on screen. And, um, and there was one, but the, for me, what I pitched to Christos was, was that there was one section of the book which would make a really great mini, four-part miniseries, and uh, which was take, taking the years from 1996 to the year 2000, which is actually a significant part of the book, but it's only really, say, a third of the whole story. Um, and, and I sort of said, well, that's, that's what I want to make into a miniseries. I actually don't want to do the contemporary story. And, you know, typical, typically of Christos, he, he just said, yeah, go for it. Because um, he trusted me after the experience of the slap and we could, you know, I, I could see that this was going to make a really beautiful, um, uh, very contained story. And then we, and you don't have to... You don't have to change actors, which is really hard to do. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of technical. You don't have to cover many eras, which is makes it really expensive. And like, there are all kinds of things that that uh, made it made it work much better. And and then we then we changed one element of the story, which is, uh, but we took it from a line that Christos had almost at the end of the book, which was almost a throwaway line, and that became the central thread of. The, the new screen adaptation, which was that um, uh, in the book, Christos talks that uh, the, the, the main character, Danny, who is gay, uh, talks about the love of his life and he's just broken up from his relationship with Clyde and, and um, someone, uh, his best friend asks him whether that's who he thinks of and he sort of says, no, that's not who I think of. He thinks of actually the boy that, who was his great, uh, swimming competitor uh, in the, in, in, and that became the story of the whole miniseries in, in the end. So, um, so that, th those my, uh, I guess what, what I can generalise from that is that you can't generalise, that basically every experience of adaptation for me so far has been um, um, very different and, and presented its, uh, their own, its own unique problems. And one of the things about Matchbox as a company, you know, like, you know, Debbie Lee is our head of development and she's Chinese and, you know, and I'm Chinese. And, um, and we, we've always been very committed to uh, representing diversity on Australian screens. I think it's, it's very important to, to us personally. And, and the way that we want to do it, in the, you know, say in the way, uh, Ali's wedding, or um, the slap. Uh, we wanted, we want, or saved, which was the TV movie that we made with Claudia, uh, which was a, a refugee story. Um, we want to do it in a way where the where the culture is the background. It's not the foreground of the story. And and because I think that really, when you you know when you look at most people, culture is the background. You know, like it's very rare that s stories. Uh, uh, where culture is foregrounded and, and so that then the culture informs the story, it becomes, it's essential to the story, but it is not the story. The story exists separate to, from it. And uh, for me, that's the, the best way of talking about, about diversity because it's actually not talking about diversity because there are, honestly, I, I've been in this business for 25 or more years and, um, and, you know, it's always been an issue for me because, I, you know, like I came, I, I started out writing about my, my family and, and soon then I became the Chinese writer because I was writing about my family. And, um, and then I was sort of tagged in a particular way. But, um, 
what, what, what I not have noticed is that things haven't changed a lot, you know, in the, uh, the whole time that I, I've been uh, working in the business. And, and I think that part of it is that, you know, people, and I, I think the, the way to make things change and progress is actually to take responsibility for the, for the quality of the storytelling. So that's actually not necessarily, because I, I think that sometimes part of the problem is that, you know, someone like me banging on about why we haven't got more, you know, Chinese people on screens is not particularly appealing. But someone like me working with Benjamin Law and Julie Exley and making a show like The Family Law and then showing uh, Chinese people on screen, uh, but not because they're Chinese, but because the story is amazing and the characters are funny. I think that's appealing. And I think that's actually the key to change and to the, the key to how we get diversity onto, onto our screens. And so the um, last thing I was going to talk about was um, the, the family law and uh, how it kind of came into Matchbox's orbit, which was, you know, we met Benjamin and it was actually Michael who met you first at a documentary conference. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And he came back and he said he just met this most incredible guy. He was so impressed. He was <laughs> and uh, and and then I read the I read the family law and it was just uh, I, again it was all those things that I uh, you know I sort of talked about in, in terms of what you what I'm looking for in in how to represent diversity which is it's it's irreverent it's funny it's quintessentially chinese without appearing chinese at all and i think jenny as a comic crea creation is a work of genius you know the fact that she is actually a real person as well <laughs> is phenomenal but you know on the page she is like the most vivid character that i have read and um and so i i kind of fell in love with, with the project and then as part of the Matchbox process, Julie came in on board and Sophie Miller came on board and she's um, a, a young producer who uh, Julie had worked with on Maximum Choppage and, and she and Ben and Jules and Kirsty Fisher basically then spent, uh, you know, how many years was it? <laughs> I feel like I've got PTSD. No, um, it was uh, like five. It, it was five, five all up, five but all in, in different, exactly. in different yeah. ways. Yeah, but in of, different yeah. Ways of but it, yeah. So, but also, it took us a long time to actually sell the project, and it took you know, it took a long time. And at that stage, SBS wasn't making very much, and so it, was, it took a long time to persuade them that this that they wanted to do it, and and eventually, um, Katerina Denav, who's uh, a wonderful commissioning editor at SPS who died last year, um, just basically took a punt and said, okay, go for it. And, and she loved the project and, and supported it. And, and for me, one of the great joys of um, the, the family law has been watching Benjamin develop and grow from. I mean, he's always been a wonderful journalist, but now he's this, this sensational screenwriter. And we have tortured him by the way, I mean, you know, if you, if you are a novelist looking to write for screen, um, be prepared. I hope you have a very high pain threshold because it, it is a torturous process like that. And Benj Benjamin is a girly swat. So he will basically try to please you and he will work and work and work. And I think that, you know, one of the things I love, think is great about the show is that all of that work has come to fruition, like it's been beautifully realised. And I, and I think it's, for, for me, it's, it's, it's one of the most important things that we've done at Matchbox. You know, it's a small six half hour comedy, but I, I, th I think it's a really important show for Australia, for now, and uh, for our company. Um, I think that's everything I've got to say, and uh, look forward to questions.